This is a work that calls out to me and has asked me to return to it many times. I feel quiet, uh, meditative when I think of it, almost reverent as I approach it. My name is Philip Maltzel and I'm an educator here at the museum. The Canadian journalist and author Carl Honoré, who has written a lot about the value of intentionally slowing down in our daily lives, asked the question that I'd like to forward to you today. What's the last time you simply gazed out the window without doing anything? As you ponder this question, I'd like to introduce you today to a special painting that deals with this very subject. Rose Hartwell, who was a native of Utah, the eighth of 12 children born to pioneer parents, painted this enigmatic work in 1910. Here, we see a woman alone, seated on a simple wooden chair in a sparsely furnished room with a small table in the corner covered with what appears to be a Jewish prayer shawl, perhaps. A simple oil lamp on the table, a couple of books, one single framed unrecognizable subject uh, in, on the wall, and a slender tall window towards which she is facing that floods the room with lots of warm light that illuminates the entire person and casts no shadows. Now the woman herself is dressed simply and in black mostly, a blue blouse, a hat, a few flowers, but she doesn't appear to be doing anything. Like Whistler's mother, who the artist painted not too long before this painting, in profile view, this woman simply has her hands on her lap and quietly and patiently sits looking out the window. Now, Whistler's mother was painted in profile view. This woman here in the more informative three-quarter pose that artists like to use to communicate more about their sitter, their psychology, and their appearance. But the title of this work tells us why the woman is idle. It is titled Waiting. So while at first she appears to be doing nothing at all, now we know she is doing something. She is waiting. Now, when you think about your own life and the moments in which you wait, what are you waiting for? Because waiting is one of those ubiquitous human experiences. We all do it. Nobody really enjoys waiting, but we're all forced to wait. It is, in fact, forced deceleration, as Carl Honoré writes in one of his books. We find ourselves waiting everywhere, all day long, don't we? Just driving to work this morning, I found myself waiting, it seemed, at every single red stoplight. We find ourselves waiting, of course, at the dentist's office, uh, at the airport, even in the checkout aisle. We find ourselves waiting for seasons, the end of a day, the end of a time in our lives, at the end of a particular challenge we go through, and we don't hope certain things to ever end. What do you do while you're waiting? Think about that for a second. Do you immediately reach for the phone, looking for a way to distract or perhaps feel productive? Certainly, there are lots of opportunities out there. Think about Quibi, that fairly recent attempt on the part of the movie industry to fill even 10 minutes of our time with some entertainment. Or recently, when I was at the gas station, uh, no sooner had I started pumping gas that a, a screen popped up and started playing the news for me. And I was quite surprised by this because I didn't expect it, but it did remind me that we are somehow encouraged to not ever wait idly, never to really be alone with our thoughts. Think about how you feel when you wait. Are you calm and serene, looking inward, uh, contemplative perhaps? Or do you easily grow impatient, perhaps even furious, at having to wait and be idle? Now, as you contemplate these things now, let's also look at this woman and think about what she is doing how she's waiting, what she might even be waiting for. Now, I'd like you to comment your ideas because the artist really doesn't tell us who she is, what she's waiting for, or really how she's waiting except for what she uh, paints. Now, what might she be waiting for? We see her face facing the window, looking outside. Is she waiting for a ride, a carriage to pick her up? This is 1910. Cars are starting to appear, of course. Is she waiting for a taxi? Where is she going? Look at the way she's dressed. Look at her mannerism. Look, think about the station in life she finds herself in. 
I think the artist wants us to imagine a narrative here. Again, tell me what you think in the comments below, but also look at how she's waiting. Notice how she's not picking up the books there, how she's clasping her hands. Perhaps she's waited so long that she's put down the books that kept her busy for a little while. But look at her face. I think that is most telling, how she seems to be drawn inward, contemplative, meditative even, or to use a modern term, mindful. Now, Rose Hartwell might not have thought of mindfulness the way we think of it today, that idea of being present and aware of one's own breathing, one's own uh, body, the, one's own surroundings without having those deep thoughts. But who knows? Is she meditating or is she really just thinking about something so deeply that she is, as my son would put it, and he's nine years old, zoned out? You look at that face, you look at those eyes, yes, they're looking outside, but really, I think they're looking inside. How does she feel while she's waiting? I would suggest that she's calm, that she feels at peace. She does not look impatient to me. She looks perfectly in harmony with herself, with her life, with her environment. But then again, maybe I'm completely wrong and she just cannot wait for this portrait to be finished. Maybe she is really just waiting for that moment when the painter says, I think we've got it, I think we're done. Now, Rose Hartwell is one of those fascinating painters from the state of Utah. In 1894, she went to Paris as the first woman artist of Utah to do so, to be trained um, in the academic tradition at the academy in Paris. She did that for three years and was rewarded with a submission to the Paris Salon, that prestigious annual exhibition venue, and accepted, in fact, there several times over the, the course of the following years. She remained in Europe for seven more years after her training and traveled extensively. And when I say traveled, I don't mean that she went like we do today. She hit Paris and, and Rome and Vienna all within the space of three days. No, she stayed a year and a half in, in uh, Italy. Uh, and she spent time in Northern Europe, in, in, in uh, Central Europe, in Southern Europe, traveling as far down south as Greece and even Egypt. She would write at one point that in Florence and Paris, I'm more at home than in Salt Lake City. But she did eventually return to Salt Lake City and that is when she uh, painted this enigmatic work. If we slow down enough, if we decelerate enough, we might find ourselves joining this woman, waiting for the meaning of this enigmatic work to reveal itself to us. I invite you to come to the museum and to slowly look at paintings like this First of all, try to find this one. It's a little bit hidden in the exhibition, Becoming America. And as you contemplate these works slowly, I invite you to really wait to find what their works are saying to you, to let them speak to you. Thank you again for joining me today. The exhibition, Becoming America, is open through the remainder of this year. And uh, I look forward to seeing you here at the Museum of Art.